is Jacob. I am the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. I have journeyed a long way. I want to thank you for your invitation to come today to your assembly to tell you my story. I have been on many, many journeys, and I have seen many strange things. Uh, to me, your see-through walls are strange. When I came into your house today, the doors opened and they closed and there was no one to push them. And this too is strange to me. But today I want to tell you of the strangest thing that has ever happened to me. The strangest thing was the day that I wrestled with the Lord. I was camping alone in the hill country of Gilead. I had just seen my family help them across the stream at Jabok. The next day we would be going to meet my brother Esau. But I would stay back, alone. And there I was, staying warm by the fire, when a man approached. I didn't see where he had come from. He was tall, solid. I started to wonder if I had anything I could share with him. And he grabbed me. He grabbed me. And I thought, I've always been a scrapper. I will get the upper hand. And we wrestled. We wrestled. And as we did, this, this man seemed like he was more than a man. It wasn't his strength, he, he was strong. It was the way that he almost anticipated my every move. But this didn't discourage me. It only energized me to keep fighting. And I did. Hours passed. I remember the, 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 the sun was starting to come up. And I was wondering, would, would either one of us ever get the upper hand? And that, that is when he touched my hip. And with a simple touch, my socket was set out of joint. And I fell. And I clung to him. To the angel of the Lord, I clung to him. And I insisted that he bless me. And he did. He blessed me with a new name. Israel. Israel. Maybe for you, Having a new name doesn't seem so important. But you need to understand that my name, the name given to me by my father, is Jacob, which means supplanter or, or deceiver. This is not such a flattering name but I lived up to it. I told you I was always a scrapper. I'd always do what I had to to, to get ahead. Oh, my, my parents would tell me the story of how in my mother's womb, my twin brother Esau and I would always be fighting. And then on the day of our birth, Esau would be born first. And there, a few minutes later, I would be found coming out, reaching up, grasping at his heel. 
It seemed like, like Esau and I were always fighting. Oh, I remember, I remember the time when I, when I conned my brother right out of his birthright. He had been hunting, and he came home famished. I'm sure he would have eaten the dust right off the ground if I'd only put it on a plate for him. Oh, but I, I had something better. I had made my stew. Goat, onions, barley, lentil, coriander. Roma filled the house. I knew Esau could not resist. And he didn't. He asked me for a bowl, and I said to him, I will sell you a bowl. But you must give me your birthright. Swear on it. And he did. I knew he would. <clears throat> Esau never had much uh, self-discipline. Winning the birthright was one thing, but I also had to, to win my father's final blessing. Esau being born first would, would get a double portion of my inheritance. My father always favored Esau over me. But my mother, she took care of me. And she had a plan. And one day as Esau was, was out hunting, she said to me, Jacob, go and get Esau's finest clothes and put them on. And I did. And I, and I covered my, my arms so they resembled that of Esau's. And my mother, she... She made my father's favorite meal and gave it to me and said, go, and I did, and I, I took it to my father and I, I presented it to him as if I were his eldest son, Esau. He was suspicious at first, but he had poor sight and, and Esau and I, we sounded enough alike. And I told him that, that the Lord had helped me to retrieve his meal quickly. And I won my father's firstborn blessing. I had tricked my father. It wasn't so hard. I won the blessing, but it cost me Oh, it cost me. Oh, when Esau returned, he, he was enraged. He was so mad. He swore that he would kill me. And so I had to flee. I had to flee my homeland. And I went to live with my uncle, Laban, my mother's brother. Hmm. <laughs> but that is where I met the beautiful Rachel. The first time I saw Rachel, uh, she was uh, uh, dressed in a white uh, garb, and uh, her, her face uh, uh, almost glowed. I knew I wanted her for my wife, and I went to Laban, and I said, I will, I will work for you for seven years in return for Rachel's hand in marriage. And he agreed, he did. But then when the seven years were up, he tricked me. He tricked me. Laban dressed up Leah, his, his older daughter, as the bride, and by the time I had figured what had happened, it was too late. I'd married the wrong 
woman. Laban would say to me that it was customary in their family that the older daughter be married first. But I think it's because she had poor eyes. She had no prospects. And so I would work another seven years for my Rachel. Ah. I was always working to get ahead. And when I'd had my wives and my children, and I was feeling that it was, it was time to leave, that God was calling me back home back to the promised land. But Laban, he, he, he would come to me and say, Jacob, don't go. Jacob, the Lord, with you here, the Lord has blessed me and has blessed our family. And so I stayed. And we, we worked out an arrangement that allowed me to to build up my own flock of sheep. I would like to say to you that the deal was fair, but that's just not how things were. Laban was always trying to trick me to change my wages over the years, and, but I tricked him. I. I found a way to, to trick him out of his strongest sheep. I took them for my own. And, and over the years, my flock grew stronger and stronger, and, and his would, would weaken. And again, I would get ahead. But I had burnt another bridge. It was time to go. God was calling me, calling me home. And so I snuck out one night with, with my wives and my children and our servants and our workers, and, and we left. Laban did not even know at the time. I did not know this as we were leaving, but... But later I would find out that Rachel had, had gone into her father's house and she had stolen his idols. I, I don't know if maybe some of, of my manipulative tactics were rubbing off on her or, or if this was a family trait that she had gotten from her father. But either way, it, it almost got her killed as Laban had caught up to us and would search our tents and Rachel made up a story and hid the idols and threw him off track. And we were off again. Off again, heading toward home. And as we got further and further, and as we got closer and closer, to the promised land. I kept thinking about Esau. How would he react? How would he respond when he saw me? A lot of time had passed. Would he forget the past? Would he forgive me? Or would he try to make good on his, his oath to have me killed? All these thoughts kept racing in my mind. Was I scared? Was I scared? Yes. Yes, I was scared. I know my brother Esau. He is a strong man. But I also know that I have been in tough situations before. I've always found a way to, to get ahead. 
I would do it again. And then the Lord sent angels to me as he had done in the past to affirm to me that I was on the right track, that I was following his command. Oh, that was an encouragement, such an encouragement. But I could not leave anything to chance. And so I came up with a plan. I would, I would send messengers ahead to let Esau know of my coming and to gauge his reaction. And then I would send him gifts. Wave upon wave upon wave of gifts of, uh, of cattle and sheep and donkeys and goats. As a way to, to give back some of that blessing I had taken. As a way to soften him up. And then just in case that did not work, I would, I would take my family and I would, I would divide them into two camps so that if Esau and his men would attack the one group, maybe the others could escape. I'd, I'd thought of everything. Anything I could do in my own strength, I would do just to get ahead. But that's when it happened. That's when it happened as I was there alone and worrying about my brother. That is when the Lord came to me and wrestled with me. And as we wrestled that night, I did what I always do. I fought, always trying to get ahead, just like I'd done with Laban, like I'd done with my father, with Esau. I fought. But this did not work. God had my number. And I realized that all this fighting, trying to get ahead on my own, there was no deceiving him, no tricking him. It was all meaningless. Because when the time came for the fight to be over, with a simple touch, my socket was set out of joint. And God reminded me. He left me with this reminder that he is strength, that he is my strength. And if God has called me back to the promised land, who am I to, to try to do it in my own strength? And I fell, I fell, crippled physically but strengthened in my faith. And I clung to the Lord, and I insisted that he bless me. I insisted. Oh, I was stubborn. But he did. He did. He blessed me with a new name, Israel, Israel, Israel. He who struggles with the Lord. Hmm. Uh, 
maybe some of you too feel that you can get ahead on your own strength. Maybe at times you too feel that you can forge your own path. Do things your way. You think you are so strong. You think that your smarts have gotten you here. Don't be a fool. For if the Lord has called you, then he will deliver you. Yield to him. Fall to him. Cling to him. For when you are weakened and give up all notion that you can do it on your own, then you will be strong. Then your faith will grow. Then your faith will grow. And then God will use you. Shalom. Thank you, Jacob. That was a powerful. We're going to go into our response time now. We're going to ask the uh, baskets to be passed around. There's Audis and Innies. The Audis will come around first. They're the ones you take stuff out of. The Innies come around after that. They're the ones you put stuff in.